button record and we will start the day off. Thank you very much for coming in. And sorry about what happened on Monday. Monday, we had a little glitch on the GoToMeeting. So we couldn't really log in in time. And I had to request them saying, if we don't start in the right time, then it is definitely not going to be okay. And hence, we had to call it off on Monday. And we said we'll uh, pick up another day where we are not doing email marketing, which is on a Wednesday and Friday. We thought we'll uh, go ahead and bring you inside the class. Here we go. Now we are in here. Uh, I already have a question. Vishwani says, I wanted to ask if there's any other pre-reading material that we need to learn on the on this particular module. Uh, I am sure there must be some, right, pre-reading material. But here, instead of looking at a pre-reading material and also looking at what you're likely to do, fairly simple. Here's what the outcome should be. You're looking for databases. You're looking for databases you will find ways to source databases. You will find meaningful places where you can invest your time and you will find a set of email addresses. Whether it's in bulk or whether it's in smaller quantity, all dependent on the source that we are tapping in. That's all we are here for. So let's. that's the agenda. The agenda is you want email IDs, you would need some sources where you can get them. So A, Bring in your notepad, wordpad, text file, whatever is easy for you. Yeah, bring those in and then start noting down wherever we say bulk mail, bulk extraction, one-to-one -one extraction, validation, softwares, web directories, keywords. And these are the categories that we will be discussing. Kindly jot down notes. The entire class is on record mode now. So which means, yes, Robin is my co-trainer. He always comes and checks the basic. He always uh, wants to make sure that we send out the feedback links. I don't know if Robin is actually also engaged with Digital Vidya, but he normally uh, cross-checks with me saying, is the record button turned on? Uh, have you started recording it? Have you given the feedback form? Just that he doesn't come back and check the rating as, as uh, anyone given a wrong comment on it or negative rating so far. <laughs> Apart from that, Robin will be my co-coordinator and he's going to be uh, with us today. There you go. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Robin. I, I know it's it's very helpful, Robin. Trust me. Okay, so we are going to be looking at sources and how we can do that. And since it's the, it's the recording on, turned on, so you don't really have to necessarily worry about saying, did we pick up this URL, right? Can we go back to the video recording? Should what you're thinking must be. So the video recording will be coming in maybe in a day's time, one day, or maybe uh, let's say we are in India, one day will be two days time. So two days later, you will get the copy of the video recording. Let's stay in touch with the reality because not everything is going to be working as we expect it to be. Good. With that basic set, let's go back and do some homework. Okay. Now there's a, a special announcement here to all those people who have come in. I know we are all learning digital marketing but we are learning at our own pay, uh, pace, right? So which means you don't really have to look at a 16 year old and say, how come, how come this person is actually getting special attention? Now, definitely yes. Trust me, when I was 16, I don't know where I was spending my time on. Maybe I was cycling. Maybe I was running around here and there with my cricket bat, but I was never really looking at creating a web portal, talking about a dog and not a doggy, yeah, something like that. So, I mean, not talking about a doggy, but talking about a dog. Maybe that's where I was engaged. But this 16-year-old is amongst you right now. And he definitely requires that special attention. And that's why he's getting that extra limelight. And I want him to continue getting this limelight no matter where he goes. That's my best wish from the bottom of my heart that this gentleman may be Microsoft, don't join Microsoft, may be Apple computer and helping that Tim uh, cook and cook better and uh, quite a lot, right? He could do something special. If he's in Bangalore and decides to come there, I would suggest please come, please come to lead sourcing, you will have a place. You go ahead and do whatever you need to do and let us know what's your price and ticket price. We probably will see how we can, uh, we can, uh, we can pay you up. Okay, good. That's for him from our side. And I'm sure there's a, quite a lot to learn. If you're around the city, don't leave him alone on a Saturday and Sunday. Keep him busy. Let us find out what he's eating, what he's doing. Is he joining a meditation meditation class? What's Who's his Guruji? We need to find out all that. But well, he's not in Bangalore. So if not, I would have definitely brought him for coffee. Uh, good. Keeping that in mind, 
let's go jump and take a look at our agenda today agenda is fairly simple when we're looking for sources on emails which is by default everybody is hunting for emails right um <laughs> thank you very much you're very humble but it, this is 16 year olds are talking in other 10 years you will see what you know you're going to be asking us anyway you can start thinking right now <laughs> okay so when you're looking for email addresses we want sources where we can find them number one now the number two we also need to find out are we legally doing this or are we also going to be creating a situation like cambridge analytica yeah cambridge analytica also had the need right they wanted data they not just the data of first name last name and email id but they went ahead and looked at what is anand interested in what is niti uh, nitin interested in what is niti is interested in all that the number of hours we spent is it worth the uh, worth to spend hours yeah so those are some of the questions that they had in mind and they quickly developed softwares they pinged uh, you know facebook i did not get into much details about whether it was a legal contract or a not so legal contract but at the end of the day they had access to the libraries of the entire facebook and they started capturing data now it turned out to be illegal because um, something that mr zuckerberg also agrees that he did not intend to do that in the back end okay now it becomes a crime story here because somebody stole and jumped the wall and we are stealing out data from a third party company which is legally wrong are we going to be learning that now it's very important to actually understand that point of view and then go ahead and see what's possible to do and what is not now the entire session is going to be looking into bulk when i say bulk i mean smaller quantity of bulk maybe you will say millions millions will take a long time and it's definitely illegal way of making money or making getting the database millions but if you're looking at a handful of emails to start your journey off yes doable are there any public sources that we can actually uh, you know tap on and the answer is yes we can can we go ahead and continue the process in a longer term and then we we'll be able to get in more such data and the answer is yes okay so let's see how we can do that bulk in other words a handful of quantity of data that we want to get started with now when we say data 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 we want to also understand that what type of data are we going after okay now that's a question for you what type of data if you had this particular genie coming and telling you saying aapke paas do boon hain i'll give you two wishes your wish will be granted tell me what do you want can you in with clarity tell me exactly what your wish would be on the database side don't give me the other wishes just the database wishes what would your wish be what would you want to do who are you going after there there you go that's exactly what happens most of the time and that's why god, the gods the so called gods don't actually break the ceiling anymore audience profile yes that's exactly the other word for asking you who are you going after so it's a very important task that one should do in order to find out who we are going after if the audience profiling or persona of the individual that you are looking at is not done if we are unclear of who we want to really go after then the entire activity of what we are doing is going to be having no meaning at all that's why google map when you're looking at a gps system as soon as it starts to give you directions on where you want to go the first question is where are you right now and the second question is where would you want to go and if you don't really answer that right you will never get the direction as to which path you should take here to just make sure that the audience profile is clear and let's say i have a product i have a product i have a product which is uh, okay for a marketing individual to use now i'm definitely looking at marketing people isn't it because if those are the guys who are supposed to be using the product then i will have to pitch my product to the marketing folks agree disagree if i have a product which is okay for sales people and marketing people to use don't you think i will have to go after them that particular department that particular title agree there you go yeah absolutely agreed uh, you are nityanand ramakrishna yeah oh yeah so the introduction for those who actually don't know me my name is nityanand and ramakrishna not just the nityanand and the swami you will accidentally get that in they are my seo competitors uh, just make sure that you uh, that you type this in as ramakrishna 
I've heard about you. Uh, yes, sir. I hope it's all good things that you heard about me because I, I do many things. Um, uh, amongst that, I'm sure you're looking at all the good ones. Yeah, just just pay attention to the good one. Ignore all the uh, you know other uh, things that you get get in. Okay, good. I did. Okay, good, sir. Fantastic. I'm happy to have you around as well. Uh, yeah, you sound like a cheetah, so you don't don't jump on me, uh, Swami. You're not me. Nityanand is uh, Ramakrishna. Okay, good. SEO competitor is Swami. Yes, Nityanand Swami. After he did that mistake, which he is now happening to do a lot more. Uh, I am not able to kill him on the search engine. It's really, really tough. But still, when you search for email trainers in Bangalore, you'll only find Nityanand Ramakrishna and not the Swami. Good. Now, coming back to the point in terms of what we're going to be doing here, audience profiling is important. So you look at your product, you look at your services, you look at the kind of service you want to take it to the market, and then you look at who is ready to buy this. And when you go ahead and look in such particular direction, you will automatically know you're looking for somebody in, in a particular corporation, in a particular location, in a particular department, and working under a particular title. Now, that's one of those ways on how you can profile them. Rashmi has already put a nice word there, marketing word, saying if we don't profile them or identify the persona of the individual that we are going to reach out to, the entire marketing activity will become futile. Okay, so let's say I have this product and it is meant for marketeers and salespeople. I want to go ahead and sell them. How do I start my journey? Well, the first thing is to find out who is ready to give me free data. Like in absolutely not charging you anything, but it says, well, I am a repository, I am a database. I collect and gather and store all of them here. Anyone who knows how to take this will be able to utilize it. And that's Google. Absolutely. So Google it is. Google is one of the search engine, like I call it an encyclopedia. This encyclopedia holds on to a lot of information. Anyone who doesn't know how to work on Google normally keeps the private data as public. Private data sometimes made public. This is not Google's mistake. This is the web developer's mistake. Like, for example, five years back when Aadhaar card, you know, was pushed in saying, hey, you got to have that. You got to have that. I didn't know that they had a uh, the second opinion on selling it at five or 500 rupee per login. Uh, but at the end of the day, they didn't make everybody push in saying you got to have an Aadhaar card. Well, we found out the reason in 2018 that it was only to sell uh, 500 rupee accounts to access to all of them around the world. Anyone can access those. Of course, there must be prevention now. But end of the day, some private data will also be public if the web developer doesn't know what to keep or what to show up on Google and what not to. Okay, so the web developer's work would be to store those protected files like the softwares of your uh, of uh, Aadhaar card, which was available on public, generally freely available softwares, printer, anything that you wanted, all those documents, documentation was easily available, accessible using an FTP portal long, long time ago, five years back. But now they understood that there is illegal activity. Somebody is finding it on Google. They're downloading it. Web cameras open. IoT, we say, Internet of Things. Internet of Things is also giving you access to keep everything on your Wi-Fi and you can always access them. And that's going to also, if it is not prevented, can link and show up on Google search when somebody is really digging in deeper. Okay, so there are many, many things that Google does. What Google wants to find out is, is it a public data or is it a private data? If it's a private data, that means it's meant to be locked and Google should not show it. And that should be uh, aligned by a web portal. And the web portal should give in directions to Google saying, this is a private data, don't step inside. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and ask IoT, the next generation. No, it's already this generation. Uh, but very soon it's going to amplify its uh, you know, reach. I'm sure you already have Amazon at home, uh, the Eco and Alexa and quite a lot of guys. Right? Uh, they're already talking to you, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So if your refrigerator has not uh, started ordering uh, gro groceries by itself, that means you need a change in the refrigerator as quickly as you can because it can now communicate with a lot of grocery stores in and around. And it can tell you saying how many eggs you used and how many is more pending and automatically place the order. Yeah, and it all comes in. 
that would be convenient it's all coming it's all coming it's it's going to be uh, so easy uh, and also so tough because there are not just one window there will be many many window open you lock the main door but what about this windows that you're keeping open refrigerator your amazon eco and your alexa guy and all of those guys they are the windows so we got to really be protective as well which at a later class i'm sure dv will come up with some module we'll uh, run you through the security processes on what you should do at home i'm i'm there i'm there uh, i think i've got another 10 years i'll be around uh, maybe the security classes we'll take to all the home users as to what needs to be done good and would be very precious for a bigger play absolutely sir there you go you, you heard the man say uh, it is very very important to see all of that coming in because when you're learning you got to learn it full p e s t political economical social technological you got to be informed you got to know how things are changing how fast they're changing and you should also know when is the saturation point coming in right and if you're not aware of all this that means you will really be dependent you will be alone in the in the marketplace so keep a close watch on what's happening politically economically socially because if socially everybody for i mean uh, for goes uh, facebook and instagram what's going to happen so things are going to be really really different in way the way we communicate okay or exchange information there, there are many many things there technological for carless driverless cars and many many other things are actually in the lineup and augmented reality is coming in i don't know if we will all get specs to wear and the refrigerator i mean what do you call the lift the elevators will also be augmented reality i don't know i'm just i'm just thinking out loud uh those are all things that uh, you know at in the making they're all coming very very soon but we'll have to be equipped let's first to get equipped on how do we source this information google it is So Google has pretty much all the answers to all the questions that we have. I'm going to go simply ask him saying marketing buddy department is marketing. I want uh, email IDs from location Delhi. Anything that the keyword says Delhi, pick that individual and also just look at the gmail.com. Yeah because I want a sort of emails that I want so I know what I'm looking for. can you just go ahead and pick up marketing delhi and all the gmail accounts no questions asked gmail well, i mean google will go ahead and do execute that particular command and will go ahead and find out how many of those web portals kept the information public if the information is public that means you are okay to be seeing it using it if it is private it's the mistake of the web developer who has not protected it sealed it covered it prevented it from google seeing it if google sees it and you are also watching it no problem whatsoever because google has it right it's public data data that is available for anybody to go ahead and pick up and use that's exactly what we're looking at right now well here's the email digital marketing it's coming in from a web portal and it says gmail accounts gmail accounts gmail accounts now it's only 10 pages see uh, if we are really going after one page after another it's going to take a long long time before we get in gray hairs uh, you know as 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 we click on the button next 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 i think we should cut short in the process how do we do that let's see what the maximum would be from google to go ahead and see how they can uh, change the settings here uh, yeah the smart ones are already saying it go ahead in uh, in the settings and make the changes let's follow them click the button settings and then you see the search settings click the button search settings and now you can see that the results is actually moving from 10 to 100 so you can move it to 100 so you can go ahead and scroll that particular slider or pull that slider to 100 leave it there and then click the button saying save now it says okay confirm that your preferences are being saved uh, but are you really a human to actually search 100 pages each um yeah go ahead pass the test don't worry about it it's questioning you whether you're a human or non human uh just go ahead and finish that piece there you go you're done with it and now what you see is 100 results on one single page depending on how much google is having the limitation to display to you will be decided on the number of pages it wants want you wants you to see have access to okay so we have 100 on this and then we want to actually scrape the data out which is get only the email addresses out and forget all the other things that is there how do we do that 
Control A, the technical skill that you need to do after you type the string in. Control A to select all. Control C to copy. And then you move to a portal which does the magic. Email Reaper. Email Reaper. Fairly simple uh, program. It says go ahead and paste what is in the input window. Whatever junk you copied. Please paste that there. Okay, got it. We paste that there. And it says, please click the button which says extract. And what, whenever we see an email ID, we will push them into the output window. Okay, good. Click the button, extract. And now you can see that it's picking all of it, but in one line with a comma separated value. It's just picking up everything in one line. I want that to be sorted out. So I click the button here saying, could you please make this one below the other? Like one below the other, keeping the format well. Click the extract button again. And now you can see that it's actually picking up all of those, all of those in the series, one below the other, one below the other. There you go. Okay. Now you can, you can go ahead and look at marketing. You can look at sales. You can look at a web portal. You can look at one single company. You can do many, many things around that particular, uh, particular string that we gave you there. Okay, now redo. Yes, we are going to be redoing it multiple times. Uh, first and foremost, let's give you the string. Let's give you the string. Copy this, paste. Copy this particular portal, paste. Uh, there was that person, Vishwani. Copy and paste them as quickly as you can on a notepad and put a small header there saying what you learned here. So which means any title, any keyword, uh, along with an email ID. Google is actually going to go ahead and fetch that similar data and it'll show up to you. And the next step would be to scrape them under email reaper. Just add that particular URL, drop a title. That's it. That's all you need to do. And I'm hoping that you're already doing it now. Let's go and take a look at another example so that it becomes like a repetition, but it's not repetition, but the same activity will be performed again. Okay. This time, what I want to do is I want marketing. I want them to be in Delhi. I also prefer it to be from a particular company. How do I do that? Well, I think we'll go ahead and modify this Gmail onto another company name. So IBM, if that's okay with you, IBM. All right, it goes, picks up, but not a single email so far, because as you could see, it's only pointing at the uh, web domain. And there is a reason why it's only pointing at the web domain and not the email IDs, because in.ibm.com is the email ID and not ibm.com. So let's see if I can modify this by saying in.ibm.com and check for it. Now you can see there's more profiles coming in with corporate profiles, not just the Gmail account. So I'm looking at corporate profiles from IBM. Okay, let's see how many we gathered. Control A, Control A, Control C to copy. I jump to my email reaper and then I clear off the old, uh, you know, older search results and I search for it again. Now click the button extract and you can also see the number 72 on the first page of Google with all domains related to in.ibm.com. Now I can go after company after company, isn't it? So if I know somebody on LinkedIn and if I know the person's or the company name, I can go after this particular company as well. Sadhanam, I think you've already got the answer. Let's see what that is. Can we do this for one-to-one -one, uh, you know, particular organization? All right. Oh, there you go. Absolutely. Yes, you can. All we need is some information out of LinkedIn. When you're looking at a profile and you know the person is working in this particular company and you want to, you want to find out a list of emails, well, you can go ahead and do that. Not just pick up a list of people working inside the company, but in fact, go ahead and look at a few more people who you really want to go ahead and influence your product and services there can be done. And that's exactly what we've done here too. Good. I hope the person who said repeat, did you get the answer? Did you follow through as to how it is done? Uh, Ishnath. Okay, great. Thank you very much for confirming. Good. Everybody okay at par with this. And you can do many more, more many more things there. Uh, the reason why we showed you corporate is uh, some people really want corporate email addresses. So Danim was directly outright calling out saying, I want corporate emails, not the Gmail, because he had a logic there saying corporate makes sense to reach out rather than a generic uh, domain, because I don't know if these guys are still using it. Yeah, but I guess only in India, right? 
because other countries have implicit permission uh, and not a, uh, not allowing implicit permission and the answer is yes because that's what i saw uh, i mean that's what i made a mention in the in the orange color right below the lead sourcing maybe the doggy took off the limelight uh, i'll take the lot doggy out and i'll put it right in front of the doggy saying doggy pro- promote this doggy promote this see and now i'm sure you you were able to uh, watch it carefully and this is what it says only applicable in geographies where it is okay to uh, okay to send uh, or use implicit permission if you're going ahead and using in places where implicit permission is not allowed then you're in trouble there you go now i can see there only applicable in geographies where implicit permission type is allowed us yes you can india yes you can canada no you can't european region no you can't uk very soon yes you can very soon yes you can because europe europe is actually going to slightly eliminate uk there and since uk is coming out of the european region you probably can malaysia yes you can so systems like that you got to really understand the the wikipedia link that i gave you earlier during our email marketing classes when we were looking at cop number 1 and of course the compliance guidelines if you go ahead and look at that you definitely want to see which country is allowed uh, to use implicit permission and which is not south africa uh, i belong i can too yes sir you can i believe you can too see i i i really understand that uh, sms shortcuts but i'll do my best i think you said i believe i can too yes you can too no problem whatsoever because very soon we will also be targeting nigeria and quite a lot of country i mean uh, uh, countries inside africa is a country so we're going to come in there to africa very very soon with some healthcare services i'm going to go beat up uh, beat, beat up that particular sector too very very soon hey i'm a legit legitimate spammer you may address me as spammer no problem at all because what i don't sell is the uh, is the product which actually fools you like for example you want a 10 lakh ro- lottery ticket no 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 you got no lo- lottery ticket i'm not even giving you 10 uh, dollars either so what i will be doing there is to help you understand what type of products healthcare companies are bringing in and what are the advantages that you have those are the only areas that we uh, do uh, marketing around and so when we do it in bulk people have a different version for it and we are named as spammers good i i am the so called spammer you're talking to one now this is exactly what you can do when you want to really look at a, a quick list of information out of google because google is picking up every information out of the website which is archived to make it available on the general public which means seo optimized websites pages which are seo optimized are now available for you to scrape because a the company chose to be on the on google and they want this information to be found simple does this extract just the marketing guys and all email ids out of ibm that's exactly what we indicated but it will not be precisely 100% right in terms of marketing maybe the person belongs to the marketing department they are in ibm and they belong to the marketing department is he a marketer we are not sure because the keywords that it's currently matching is to find out if the person is in delhi and the keyword it's also trying to match up is is it matching up with the ibm.com so i would say 80% accurate data in terms of who you're reaching out to okay good now there's another challenge here you might go ahead pick up any number of names any number of companies um uh, let me let me do this if i'm going to go do this generally for a company let's say lead sourcing.in i want all email addresses related to the domain called lead sourcing.in picks up all of them whatever is on the web portal and it will go ahead and run a check to see uh, if there is any other domain which actually has this particular name there you go email address not too far is there a way to find out uh, if they are active and can we pitch them that's the that's the next element stay with us i'm coming there So Nithi at lead sourcing becomes easy uh, to fetch and now you can start adding me onto the spam list or any list that you want to and then I can start getting out uh, receiving SMSs or emails 
now if i want to avoid coming out of your uh, you know coming or staying in your list i can always use an unsubscribe link to move out unsubscribe link is a privilege given to the user saying that if you don't want to receive communication please click here to move on if i am not given that provision that's when you are really annoying the customer saying that i don't want this information it's irrelevant to me and you're not giving me an exit point and if you don't give them an exit point since we're looking at animals today let's take that cat's example if a cat feels that it's cornered what does the cat do if a cat feels that it has no way to escape but it's cornered it attacks ask the pet lover he will know it starts to go ahead and attack the individual who is right in front do you own uh, the reaper is that a great product like ibm uh, i would love to but that's a source copied from somebody third party but since uh, there's a requirement for scraper we kept this product on just one single page uh yeah the, if i'm just waiting for that 16 year old to go pick up this product develop a little more and do some uh, miracle work there but he's busy with ibm and apple and all that piece we will come there uh, chetan uh, i hope you get the point it's a very simple software it has a very simple javascript in the back end and what it does is it does the purpose uh, pick up email addresses and it's a source copy because today what do we own Airtel sang that song very well, isn't it? It said, "Jo abka hai, o mera hai." What they said is, "Jo tera hai, o mera hai." That's how they sang the song, and that's exactly how it is. Today, there is no code that belongs to you personally, and there is no code that belongs to me, unless it's pirate, p- 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 patented, and and uh, copy protected. If not, nothing belongs to you. Copy protection is also a myth again, because I can go ahead and modify the code to fit my need, and that becomes my code. so that's exactly how it is on the web and that's exactly what's being done here it's not a great product like in a product um, but it does the purpose on picking up the email addresses job done like this i've given you a carrot now you can go ahead and bring in any domains you want given as many uh, contacts as you want out of that particular particular company that you want to get after well that's exactly how you go ahead and fetch them now are there any other sources that we can uh, you know bring in because the other wonderment is are these people all active people that means are the email addresses going to be valid emails that's a bigger challenge with data marketing today because you can compile the list shelf it saying that these are all people from marketing department out of delhi north india airtel subscribers and many many lists that are still making the rounds you know uh, if you take a closer look the list is compiled in the year 2007 list is compiled in the year 2007 and that's being sold in the year 2018 many people and that is because the cost is very low the number is very big millions of emails for 500 bucks now anyone will be tempted to see what that data is so when you pay up the 500 bucks and get the list you will notice that it is all dated 2007 now how do we know if this valid validator validation of that particular data is right or wrong because google may also have similar information google says if the portal exist i don't think if the company is not existing i'm not checking on that but if the portal exist i will go ahead and bring that in okay now how do we sort that problem out let's go back and say this is validation i want to know if it is actually valid email or an invalid email valid or invalid question mark okay now how do we get this out first let's understand what is validation process okay so let's get in here and say nithi at gmail.com this is my email uh, this is not my email i'm just giving you an example of my email okay let's put my email address here fbi uh, that's how they say it right uh, yeah so say it like that F- fbi uh, nithi fbi we also have ebi ebi is email bureau of investigation uh, so yeah so i also own ebi ebi is a division which only evaluates email marketing email uh, bureau that is uh, we have a lot of people around here who, who actually wear a cap saying we are inbox experts we also have printed t-shirts i don't know if you've seen, uh, noticed that uh, seen anywhere 
but we have t-shirts printed out saying inbox experts ebi it is now the question is how do i know this ebi thingy is working or not working okay so in order to understand how the validation process works you need to understand how it is being divided as well so the second half of that email that you're looking at is called the domain this half is called the domain this piece is called the local part local part now the local part which is the name any name it can be it can be with a dot underscore and many other combination that people have decided to have that can be any combination domain so we need to validate not just the domain part if you type in www.google.com or gmail.com is it valid of course it'll be valid because unless the company shuts down and says uh, we're going to get out of this planet uh, it will still be saying yes it is working but is this person existing in uh, gmail.com ha that's the tough part here most of the service providers will go ahead and give you a function to validate a domain and not the local part because validation of a domain dime a dozen oh yeah you can get it like a, like a very cheap model uh you, millions of emails for about 3000 bucks 4000 bucks you can get the job done millions of email with just a few dollar i mean uh, with just a few cents you can get the job done but when you go back and tell the service provider saying i would like to validate the entire email that's when it starts to fall into prayer pricing here we go this is there are certain service providers in the market who actually do the validation 35 paise bright verify uh bright verify.com uh, i think uh, .com you just type the domain there you will get the web url bright verify is the company now there are competitors for bright verify as well 32 paise and anything between that range 30 to 35 range 32 uh, 30 to 32 paise range you will have hubaku hubaku you will have zero bounds and of course these guys have black friday thanksgiving day and many many other days cyber monday they throw out a lot of huge discounts for anyone who's coming in and signing up during that time it's lost now you'll have to wait next year in case if you're looking at when is that uh, november time i think hubaku came up with an offer 50% off on any data that you buy like in any downloads you want to do or extra credits you want to buy they give you that to validate a domain alone or the entire email this is whatever i'm calling out right now is the entire validation to just to validate the uh, domain you have a service provider who does the job very decent job in terms of validating the domain let me take you there uh, atomic email verifier and he's got many products there eh? some useful products i'll show you all of that because you've come into the class of lead sourcing um so i don't want to hide anything here so let's let's go ahead uh, together and see what is in here um email verifier you see that particular product click the button and now you can see the see some of the projects that we have done uh, hopefully it will take me there okay now it says now i've cleared off your dust okay got it yeah uh stay with me Okay, let's go to the verifier itself and drop a piece of domain. Create a task. What is that going to be? Uh, well, test domains. And you, if you have a list, you can go ahead and uh, bring in the list. If not, you're just going to be bringing in some emails which needs to be validated. Okay, Nithi um, Nithi EBI. at gmail.com and i'm going to actually also make a mistake here uh nithi at the work heroes.com i'm going to misspell the gmail here let me see what it does gmail okay so create the task and three email addresses added it says okay so these are the email addresses we want to validate start the check Okay so it runs around in the backend as you could see and it says job done and it says the job is done okay now not checked three email addresses so if you go to the email addresses you will know it says i have not checked any of these emails maybe because i don't have the credits is it start checking again 
Okay, you're free to explore this. I'm going to actually push this, uh, you know, uh, validator for you. This guy is only checking the domain. This guy is only checking the domain and he doesn't do anything else. So that's like a domain checker. In case if you want to really uh, pick up a domain checker, you can always use this guy. There's another guy who also looks at uh, domain verification, X verify. I think it's because my expiry date on that particular day was December. I haven't renewed it and that's why it's not verifying. Okay, X verify is another guy at a lower cost, only validating domains, but not the local part. So you can always use this service provider also in case if you're looking at validating the domains and not the local part. But don't waste your money there because some people are okay with domain validation. But if you're getting into data business, the email ID must be a right one. Select the email addresses. No, it's not. They only upload the data and then it'll automatically start uh, evaluating it. There is another subscription that I was reminded and I haven't upgraded it, Robin. That's why. Okay, good. Anyway, I'm going to show you more evaluators. Come with me. This is just the start of the game uh, in terms of what you're looking at as a software to use it, uh, use it for validation, bulk validation. So any of these guys will be able to do the uh, domain validation without charging you too much. But how about the guys who actually want uh, both local part as well as the domain part? If you're doing email campaigns on MailChimp, MailChimp would need an active email and not just the active domain. It has to be both local part as well as the domain part needs to be right. If not, MailChimp will reject that as a working email ID. How do we do that? Well, I think let's go to Ubuku and ask Ubuku saying, Ubuku, uh, what's your idea? Can you help me? And the answer is, of course, Ubuku will be able to guide you through the process in terms of getting you a quick validation of local part as well as the domain part. Okay, it says, well, uh, you can go ahead and start the plan in. You also have uh, a free plan here, that email validation plan. You can pick that up. I was on this plan and I then uh, had to quit using them because I use it only when the client has a project. I don't use this when I want to use it. Uh, I mean, unnecessarily because it just throws out the credits every month and you've got to pay up 8,000, 9,000 bucks every month in order to sustain that particular 10,000 bulk that you're getting in. I click the button here to actually verify this entire domain and email. There you go. Validation of the local part as well as the domain part. Done. Okay, likewise, you can do it in bulk as well, but you need to buy credits. The more credits you buy, the discounts you get in. And the catch here is if you register for a free account, and before the expiry date of that particular 14 day free trial expires, and if you register onto a plan, you get 50% discount on all upgrades that you're likely to do in the near future. That's an added advantage here. So if you lose that 15 day free trial and then upgrade your plan, well, you'll have to pay 100% of the cost. So most of them come uh, pick up a free trial and then in 14 days time, they go ahead and upgrade 50% discount on the total price. That's Ubuku for you. I don't have a Bright Verify login, uh, but Bright Verify is also in the marketplace, but he's very expensive. And uh, even when the clients come in, we can't really afford that particular piece. So we buy their login. We tell them saying, go ahead, test them in your own uh, you know, accounts and then make sure that you use your database. That's Bright Verify for you. So there are many companies in the marketplace. Smart Selling, they are doing... Uh, they're doing PF, their product, proof of their product. Absolutely. See, end of the day, you have compiled it. You, you have put in a lot of blood and sweat in compiling the data. Now it is only to go ahead and look at whether it's a valid or invalid. You pay me for the valid ones. Yeah, you, I don't have to really collect money for the junk. Go ahead. If it is junk as per Hubaku, I'm fine with it. If it is junk as per Bright Verify, done deal. Only pay for... Only pay for the ones which are valid. This is data selling. That's how customers work. If an email is valid, does that mean it is currently active? That checker is not in the marketplace as yet. For example, Annie's email ID. Is it a working email ID or a non-working email ID? Many validators to do that particular piece. But as Annie opened up her email account in the last 30 days, if that's what you're asking, 
if active user which is like your app checking uh, how active are you and what is the duration of checks that you do on your app if that's what i'm validating in the last 30 uh, hours as any opened up that email no one can validate that no market no no company so far has gone gone to that extent to find out if the user when was the last login date of that particular user has it been 4 years past or has it been 40 minutes past no not at all only for last 30 days it will not validate that also you will never get to see whether it's the last 30 days if somebody is fooling you around saying i will also validate to see whether it's an active email uh, they just telling you stories yeah it's another another scam should we say yes it yeah uh, that's the word i was looking for yeah it's a scam it's a complete blind i wash because somebody doesn't understand that no one will give you that api gmail is never going to never ever going to give you that api saying uh here's a, a quick uh, access to when the person has been active you know it it never comes in nor can the domain users like hotmail i mean sorry your uh, godaddy and all the hosting service providers who provide the mx record they are also not going to make it available for public we had a database which we updated once in 90 days but we call those db individually and confirm them that's your that's the truth that's too much work that's the only way to find out if it's an active email yeah currently there are no softwares swarna uh, swarna uh, swarna you're hearing it there are no software so far there are no plugins so far try the linux operating system route try the free uh, what do you call the open source software checking there is an opportunity swarna there is a market there look at any company any is your first customer in case if we are building up a product so uh, think about those ideas and first is to hunt the apis today it is i'm saying that it is not available tomorrow maybe there will be day after tomorrow maybe somebody will actually leak out that particular api so maybe we should take that for advantage but wait till that doors open for now i think pretty much every door is locked saying we can't tell you whether the user is actually active or not even the ping to find out if the local domain is a uh, local name is actually existing some of the companies are not okay with that some of the companies are not okay with that so that's something that you want to keep in mind that most of them don't like this and they call it harvesting activity if you're knocking the doors too many times that's why we use multiple ips multiple domains to knock the door uh, when we're looking at gmail or hotmail or yahoo we use different domains to actually knock the door not the same guy if the same guy knocks more than dash times we studied this on our email marketing class we can knock one service provider in a minute how many times how many times can we knock the door when i say knocking i mean delivery is possible in a minute how many emails can be delivered numbers have become uh, placed wrong side but omkar good job i think it was your keyboard's mistake and he is right 21 times in a minute if you can't if you hold on to that number good whether it's a knock to check if the email is existing or not or it's a knock to deliver an email either ways we are knocking the door saying buddy we have a package to deliver and somebody says sure sir who's the name and then we say uh, this is sanyo sanyo geeta and he says yeah sure he is uh, she is here and that's all we need and then the package disappears and the guy is actually watching saying somebody knocked from this domain and they disappeared immediately because they just tried to validate but we were in r- running a package delivery right which is we're not delivering an email there so that's another validation process some people have adopted that delivering an email could be the best choice if the email bounces that means it's a bad email so they pick up some you know dummy email uh, ips and they start rolling out campaigns using that particular ip what they don't understand is that the knock is only 21 times and if you knock more than 21 times in a minute by default the domain even whether it's a valid email or an invalid email it will say error and that will also be considered as a non working email id but the person existed there so these are some of the constraints that you will see when it comes to programming your uh, your hardware i mean your software systems to do the validation processes okay good you've seen all the premium ones right this is for your customer 
in case if the customer comes in and the customer has the budget you can always move in there and say go ahead we've done our basic uh, analysis on or gathering around your database now validation is something that i will directly bill you after paying or you pay and you get the validation done and just pay me back the bill uh, tell me what is the account that hubuku or bright verify does and then we accordingly bill i work with us customers like this us customers are very sensitive in terms of data uh, harvesting a i am operating in india and according to them i am a snake charmer guy and i'm behind some temple where there are many rats because bbc is only calling out india meaning there must be a bullock cart a heavily loaded bullock cart that go- goes by the screen and then there is that uh, snake charmer's uh, picture that comes over and then followed by a big huge temple with a lot of rats So most of the US customers that I talk to they have this particular picture from BBC documentaries saying if you're talking to people in India that this is where they would have gathered it. So what we do is we say okay chalo we're not really inside the temple nor are there any rats running email chamber. <laughs> uh yeah you could say that. So these guys are uh yeah uh, they gathering somehow. So they when they look at that particular thing that's the problem right so we will have to make sure that we stand by the quality and give them the free hand saying we've done a bit you go ahead now and tell us what it is and when it comes to transparency 100% they'll come back and give you the entire report as to what hubuku said and what bright verify said and accordingly raise the bill in minutes you'll get the paypal account calling out saying that we received the money okay now that's uh, one of the ways that you can actually uh, monetize when you're looking at data harvesting or picking up a handful of profiles okay good are there any other cheaper mechanisms to get the job done sure the same atomic email verifier that we went in also has a product which is like a desktop product it takes a long time but does the job very very well uh this is called atomic email verifier atomic email verifier so you can pick up this particular product which is actually a verifier a stand alone desktop uh, system software you can buy this by paying 3000 bucks i think i i think i already have the product um since i'm not using it i might give it out to some people uh, which are uh, who may request that uh, but i don't know if you would really want to put it to use but uh, let me know if that's what so it's the software is already downloaded in terms of uh, me installing it Here's another catch. It can't work on a Mac computer. It has to work on a Windows operating system. So if you're looking at some Windows operating system on your computer, I mean uh, at your office, so you might want to install that Atomic many many products on Atomic and then start using a Windows operating system to run your database validation. Okay, so I hope uh, you will start to use this particular product as well. I can um, I can show you another product. This is only Windows as you could see it's a exe file and i it's it's just a uh, waste for me uh, sitting down with an exe file it will never get executed at all okay now the other product that you might want to be aware of is called max prog email verifier when i'm typing it you can see some keywords here samajhdar logon ke liye ishara kafi hai so i've already given you what you need to do but i can't tell you what to do i am sure you can see what is there okay so you just check the max pro gmail verifier and then click the button saying um it works on mac and as well as windows this is yeah easy for you to understand so you come in here you can download the product mac os and windows depending on your software that you want to work on you can go ahead and bring in process is fairly simple drop a set of email addresses click the start button and it will validate i have the software with me i am i'm going to bring this up okay so that's the guy um that's the guy so i'm going to go bring him um there you go is right here and he says sir one email or many emails so it can also do one to one email check you know this does the local part as well as the domain part i'll also tell you what kind of configurations that you'll have to do in here in order to make sure that you get the accurate data and not just the domain validation by default it does domain validation so you might want to be careful around that so i'll show you the settings in a minute uh, for now just know one single email can be evaluated by using the radio button here 
or multiple email sets. When you click this button, it will directly share, uh, you know, ask you to share the data sources wherever the sources are. Uh, as you could see, that, that's our bread and butter, right? Lead sourcing and email marketing. You can see many databases here. So you can pick up one of those and say, please start to validate them and it will start the process immediately. Um, the settings, you click on the preference here. I, I'm hoping that it's the same if uh, preferences on your Windows operating system too, but check for a place where it uh, you know, runs a check uh, on the preference part, then click the advanced. Now watch carefully what we're trying to say here. Stimulate, which is pretend a message delivery. That's like, uh, remember that particular trick where you ring the bell and you run away when you know somebody's at home, right? This is to annoy some, you know, neighbors that we a long, long time ago, 1947. Uh, yeah, me too engaged in that. Uh, that same thing is what we're doing here. Stimulate a message delivery. That means we're knocking to see if this particular, using this particular uh, extension to see if this uh, email is a valid email or not. Click the radio button here. And then it also says, would you like me to validate to see if it's a verify command? Yes. Check that box as well. The other one is to only make sure that your system is faster. If it's superior, then you can go ahead and alter the number 50 to 100. And then what is the domain that you're trying to use? Any domain will work. Working, non-working domains, still okay. You can go ahead and give in that particular domain and then click the button okay to exit the settings. Once that's done, go ahead, pull in a list of emails. Um, okay, so it says output. Hopefully there's emails here. Yeah, there you go. Emails. I don't know if it's valid or invalid, but as you could see, there's emails and it quickly goes ahead and shuffles them into uh, into a product, uh, into uh, the domain source. I click the start button. And the next thing that I'll have to do is it says verifying the list. Please wait. What it will do is it will quickly pick up and sort out all the dot coms uh, separately, dot org separately in the backend only to ensure that it's knocking, uh, you know, at a precise time and not too many times. As you could see, it's already starting to validate saying nine valids, uh, 10 valids, two unsuccessful, which means the domain is not answering right now. No one at home. It, it will give in five tries before it gives up on that particular emailer. There you go. It started to uh, go ahead and validate them. You can also see the back end as to what it's doing. Let me show you that. See that uh, knock? And then it quickly says 250 OK. That means somebody answered the door. And then it quickly comes back and says this is done. OK, this is a valid email because somebody is there to address them. OK, 252 is actually uh, a soft bounce. Quickly comes back and says, sorry, this looks like a valid email, but I don't think anyone is at home. 250 OK is the sign that we're looking at. And that's what shows up right here. Give me a heads up. This is clear, ladies and gentlemen. This is how you save your money rather than going into uh, Huboku and blah, blah, blah. Uh, these are all uh, very, very uh, expensive unless you have a customer. But if you're validating it for your smaller, tiny little projects, you don't want to bill a tailor uh, $250 to actually get the validation done. No, no, no. You, you want him to get in engaged with his customers. Uh, you create a MailChimp account and you charge him only 2500 bucks or 3000 bucks a month to keep in uh, with the engagement with their existing customers. So email marketing can be one of those. And you can bring in, right, 30 clients, uh, 3,000 bucks. What's your number? Would you really want to go back into an office and sit down at one project and one particular product and one particular services? And <laughs> there's many, many other nuisance that comes in along. And then pay the government 20% tax. Uh, what is that? Professional tax. But when you open up a business, then I think you, you get to share 50% of the profit and the other 50% you can show it as expenses, which is like 30-40% expenses and then gain back some of the claims from the, from the government body as well. You got to know the rules when, when you're playing the game. So sitting at an office and earning bigger, larger checks is only meaning that you're paying off 20-30% back to the government as a tax. So you might want to really look at how you can monetize your learning but because you're already a certified individual. Um, so you're looking at around 3000 billing ton with smaller coffee shops, tailor shops. Yeah, the person that you're stitching your pants, your, your shirts or maybe that uh, 
lady who is a tailor who's got the list of all the customers but never has sent an email saying this is what we are doing okay so maybe that's something that you can always think on and see how you can uh, monetize your business as well this is like email marketing reaching into in absolutely very very um, yeah, precisely put we're knocking to make sure that somebody answers it and when somebody answers it that we know that somebody is in there and jumps out saying it's a valid one if there is no one addressing it it will say sorry i tried multiple knocks but no one is responding to it can i know uh over 250 you talking about um i didn't see that can you hover over the 250 okay okay so which means the 250 okay so let's go back i i think the process is ended i will not have the backlog um but i can do it with one to one emailer stay with me uh niti at leads or saying dot in check start okay so you see the knock here 250 mx service verify niti 250 to 250 okay you with me sir that's the 250 okay so this 250 okay is is 250 okay yeah there's a company also called 250 okay oh okay i see that now because that was running too fast because it was trying to uh, evaluate a group of 50 not when the person is uh, seeing the email right no not when the person is seeing it or whether the person is actually ready to receive it it's only trying to find out whether it's ready to receive it is are you aware there is similar tools in Apa- yeah sir we are already having our own products uh, we have shrinath developing it uh, left right center and that's exactly what our offering is to a customer as well so if i'm looking at uh, shrinath here you can see those evaluators yeah there are many many evaluators and macros that we keep creating at the office only to save the cost so we end of the day build the customer build the customer like bright verify does half the cost 15 paise is what we uh, build the customer but what softwares we use what vpn services we use is all in here with us we do the validation so if you take a closer look here we tunnel this through multiple ips from other data centers because our ip can also be bad our ips can go wrong and as you could see these are the number of ips that we have in order to ping uh, data centers one data center will have five different ips we close to uh, you know invest money on this you're looking at around uh, uh, 20 30 different ips coming in from all of these data centers so we use these softwares in the back end and it's a self made product that we have which does uh, does the validation for lead sourcing and email marketing it's a service that we offer to the customer and hence we couldn't really afford a third party i mean not for too long isn't it how long can you go back and watch uh, what do you call amazon prime uh, no 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 give me a break I, I, we we need a we need it out we need we need another way out and that's something that we always keep thinking good uh, thank you for bringing that up uh, who was it anurag is it mm Anu- anurag i think anurag anurag thank you very much for bringing it and it's time for you to go back and look at those apache and uh, open source platforms huge amount of libraries huge amount of libraries that will allow you to create your own product if you know a little bit about programming you will be able to quickly combine all those libraries together and have your own self made validator okay so the sky is the limit here when it comes to digital marketing you look at a product and you want to see how you can replicate it yeah that's why it is important to see how you can put it as a niche like a you know entry barrier they call it you got to make sure that it's really really tough for people to replicate your model of plan but uh, looking at digital i don't think it's it's going to be too hard for us to replicate very soon we're coming up with a front facing interface which allows you to do something like uh, what hubaku and various other service providers do we're coming we're coming cool uh, let's go back and take a look at a few more things everybody clear with the uh, with the answers in terms of validation now i've given you the software names not just the names but i've also given you the links where it leads you to uh, if you're looking at that hubaku to be typed that's hubaku for you a bright verify if that needs to be typed so that you copy and paste it so be it uh, zero bounds there's zero bounds copy and paste it 
I hope it makes sense. And these softwares are already mentioned in one of your LMS platform tools. When you click on the tools, you have some uh, tools for email marketing as well. All these tools are mentioned in that particular process. Okay, good. Now, what else are we uh, going to be learning? Now, apart from this type of uh, harvesting that we did randomly on Google, you can also knock a specific domain. If you know the domain is actually open for public, open for public like the one that i can see here uh, email trainers in bengaluru bangalore and now you can see there you go linkedin profile shows up along with the company name now the linkedin profile showing up gives me a lot of clues saying linkedin profiles are open on google now when you know something like this that means the profile is there with a lot of details given and made public the linkedin rules and regulations or the terms and conditions are very straightforward when a user is creating the profile they are given the choice saying would you like to keep it public or would you like to keep it private depending on what the customer chooses linkedin will go ahead and push certain things on google certain things will be avoided now you're looking at that LinkedIn profile showing up for a keyword called email trainers in Bangalore. Oh, well, that's simple, isn't it? That means the door is open. So when the door is open, oh, well, I'm not going to actually stare at it. So here's what I will do. Site. This is how you talk to Google saying, uh, Google, don't go hunting everything that you have on your uh, directory. Just go ping a particular domain called LinkedIn.com. And to say that, to focus on just one domain, you say site colon, linkedin.com. I'm looking at marketing uh, and not looking at marketing now. HR and in HR, that person must be a HR manager and he must be coming out of Bengaluru, Bangalore and probably Gmail accounts. Why Gmail account? Why are you not going behind the corporate email addresses? A linkedin profiles are not a mandate for any company users to go ahead employees to go ahead and create one and most of the time it's a job security job threat right because anyone can lose a job anyone can lose a job anyone wants to make a shift into their job or profile and hence they normally keep it accessible in their own personal accounts and since it's a personal account we can't think about a corporate domain we're looking at a gmail domain there you go hit the enter button data 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 all over the place well the settings will change when you're in an incognito window reset that again and say please move that to 10 uh, 100 and preference saved google will again question you saying are you seriously sure uh yeah 100 percent there you go okay now you get 100 email addresses procedure remains the same control a control c jump back into email reaper extract one per line, one below the other. And now you have HR managers. Okay, what do I do with this Gmail account? Tell me anything beyond email. Don't tell me that you'll do an email marketing. Bad idea. Bad idea. Email is not only for email marketing. There are other ways that you can utilize it too. What would you, uh, what would you say how you'd utilize it? Uh, CV. Uh, you can, yeah, but that's going uh, through emails, right? Uh, I'm saying thank you very much. That's the answer I was looking for. Job well done. Very well answered. A lookalike customer on FB. Lookalike customers are uh, reaching out to the niche utilizing Google, Google AdWord campaign. And, in, and it goes on. You can think about different ways on how you want to utilize an email rather than just an email itself, sending out an email. That's the second choice. But when you use a set of emails, when you have done your Facebook campaign, when you have done your Facebook uh, training, you by default have gone through one particular class which talks about uh, personalized, customized target audiences that you can pick up utilizing Facebook. And in one of those places, you see how you can pick up a handful of emails and go ahead and look at, uh, you know, generate lookalike customers. Converting prospects customers into a lead is what we can call it. Uh, also, helping them, uh, you know, uh, treat your brand as not an alien, but a known angel, a known angel. Uh, yeah, unknown, a known angel 
hey, you can call it as non angel because we are lo- looking at humans as uh, victims of similarity and familiarity if they see a ppt oh they look so very good then they say aha i am at home i can go to sleep now but if they don't look at the ppt they get agitated saying hey kya pe kya ho raha hai what's happening why is he not showing me shahrukh khan's picture ha ah, yeah yeah that's exactly how people are similarity victims of similarity and familiarity so if you're not your brand is not been seen uh, on uh, facebook or on google they can't spot you at all but you sent an email that will definitely sound like a scam that will say definitely sound like a spam as well okay so how do we avoid that well i think you should pick up a handful of emails and show them a banner with your logo saying this is what we offer for the first 3 weeks fourth week send them an email you will see magic happening on your email because they've already seen you on facebook and now they know that you are also utilizing some of those mechanisms to get into their inbox too job well done okay there you go so that's exactly how you use different perspectives on your email data because it is not only that particular activity that you're looking at there's more to the game good now the question is let's focus a little more uh, on extraction okay so we're currently looking at just email uh, reaper which does the magic a little bit to pick, pick up all the emails and sort them out in proper order uh, gives it back to you saying these are some of the emails i found but is there another simpler way that i could utilize and is there more options available elsewhere oh well come with me come with me uh, there are many companies many many companies who have come up with a product because they know today we are in the information age information available on many job portals information available on many e-commerce portals sometimes we have the similar product and we want to match them i do this with my dental dental clinics i want to know the work times right when are they coming what time do they open up so i pick up all the clinics in and around hsr layout email reaper is this a free tool absolutely free sir did it ask you any premium cost right now absolutely not and it's going to be there forever including an ssl certificate because google thinks or chrome thinks that it's like a uh, like a scammy site so we have incorporated https too so it's it's easier for you to access them absolutely no problem use it as long as this survives good now coming back to the point uh, it is uh, definitely secured and uh, we are not really interested in the database because we know um we know the source yeah we get sunlight we don't need your battery yeah we get the source here source google is the sun and uh, what you're looking at here whatever you're doing is the battery we don't need your battery for power but we have google with us so just do not worry about whether this email will be taken in processed in the backend yeah we, even then we will not understand what uh, criteria you were looking for just an email is not going to be an email i mean good for us good coming back to the sun and the sources are there any ways that we can apply different ways apart from email reaper to extract the data out sure when you're extracting the data we're looking at some common uh, you know sources that we can quickly hit the button and then extract all the data out there apart from email any other fields possible fields that it can extract let's begin with a smaller game player who's absolutely uh, sitting on your chrome uh, plugin chrome plugin it is so it can sit there and get the job done very making it a little more easier for you to scrape the data out it's called scraping many companies have come up with different products but all of it is is uh, paid softwares i'll show you the free ones and then we jump to the paid ones here's a free scraper you go to chrome and say uh, scraper uh, chrome plugin scraper uh, oh, uh, with the r of course and then you say search and you see a lot of voting here uh, and you can see the first one i i'm hoping that it's the same one that i'm referring to because there are many many products are on the scraper uh, not definitely not this guy so move back and you're looking at the same one again back okay let me get you my guy uh buddy just come okay so there you go he he comes in he, he does the job very efficiently uh and look at it it is not got in that glory uh, red color blue color signs and all that 
and look at the number of people users actually using that particular plugin so yeah downloaded it at least okay good so you you're free to actually download that and i'll show you how to use that particular plugin on your chrome browser if you're on an incognito window you'll have to jump to a normal window regular window in order to install it and then uh, make it active on your incognito window as well then you can start using it on an incognito window if not by default it will not be enabled hope it makes sense that's information for anyone who's using it for the first time uh, let me know after you've done it thank you the quicker the better no doubt mm -hmm. smarty one smarty two is it <laughs> so three <laughs> and the countdown begins now okay right good four installed Oh, well said. <laughs> okay, so let's go and uh, take a look. Thank you, sir. Thank you for confirming. Come, come with me. Come with me. Let's let's go use the same uh, Google uh, uh, browser. Uh, here we type that particular string, right? Site colon LinkedIn.com. I'm looking for um, not the HR this time. CEO, Chief Executive Officer, um, preferably in Delhi. Gmail accounts, please. Yeah, the CEO also has a Gmail account. Uh, true. You'll be surprised. There you go. Many, many CEOs come in with, uh, with the emails. Thank you very much. So I send this uh, you know, script over the string uh, to you as well. Take a look. Uh, okay, so instead of using the Reaper, I'm going to go use another method. String, please. I've already pasted, sir. Okay, so I'm going to go use a different method and uh, try and extract the data. Now, it will, uh, you know, the scraper will definitely ask you saying, which field would you like to extract? Okay, so it's important to go ahead and specify what in the data that you're getting to see you want to scrape. Well, I want to scrape the URL. So the, the link here to the LinkedIn profile of the particular user, I want to scrape that. Select that. Right click after you select that and you can see that button which says scrape similar. Click the button. It will quickly go ahead and scrape pretty much everything that you see there with that particular you know link activation scrapes all the urls and says these are the urls would you like to copy it to your uh, excel sheet yeah, i mean it's control c so you can paste it anywhere you want or export it to google doc directly okay or you simply select all the information that you want you know that's the paragraph and then you can sort them out later i'm doing it i'm still doing it can you explain it one more time? I'm, I'm still doing it. So you can either select one particular line that you want to extract and it will select that particular field and then go ahead and extract similar looking. What I'm saying now is that I want all the six or seven lines that's being displayed. I want this entire paragraph. Right click, right click, click the button, scrape similar. Picks up all the data right there. Yeah. You with me? No? Okay, let's go ahead and do it in one of those computers. Um, who asked me uh, first? Let me see. What's the X path in jQuery? So if that is coming, uh, that's the path to how Google has stored the information. Now they're going to hit that and particularly get, get the information out. And that's what they're trying to ma make it clear with you, saying this is the path that they're hitting on to get the data out. But if anyone wants me to come to your computer, let me know. Nitesh, do you want me to come to your computer? L let me know. If I can do it on, uh, sure. L wait, I'm going to send you a request now. So we will do it on your computer. But you'll have to be a little faster. Uh, time is not in my control at all. Yeah, it's flying away. As you could see, I have another 21 minutes to close the day. I've sent you a request. Please accept the request as quickly as you can. To summarize, what does Scraper do exactly? Capture, capture the information and gives you the flexibility to store them anywhere you want. And then you can go do modifications and pick up the fields that you want to. Simple.
Clear, Rachel? Instead of using an email reaper kind of stuff, we are actually picking this up through this. All fields. Yeah, any field that is actually visible to you is now being scraped. Rachel, heads up. Uh, we are about to go to teleport ourselves to Nitesh's computer, but looks like the teleporting machine is not working. Um, or he hasn't really clicked on the button saying, okay, agreed, come to my computer. Sir, have you clicked on the button? Okay. Since the teleporting machine did not work, I have to return back to my original base and I will try and do this after 9.30. Okay, so Nitesh and me will spend a little more time because my teleporting device is not getting permission on the other end. Okay, because this teleporting is not a just just swing. I, I can't go there like the Star Wars guys, uh, but I will have to take a permission there with their computers to come in. Okay, cool. Let's go and see what else can be done. Scraper is one simple tool that sits on your uh, Chrome plugin and you can pretty much pick up anything that you want. There, there are many tools there, many, many of them uh, in terms of uh, some people say store a copy in their file in their databases. That's the rules and uh, terms and conditions that you'll have to accept. And most of them will not be, uh, make head or tail out of it because it's just an email ID. What can they make out of the email IDs? Nothing at all. Are there any other tools that we can put to use? Well, I think you should look at Outwit Hub. Outwit and the Hub. Uh, indicators to all, uh, was it uh, Anurag, Anurag, Swarna, Harsh? Uh, dig deeper on this particular tool. You will be able to harvest a lot of information. Uh, there is no constraints in what you can do with this particular tool here. But for the rest of you, please, eyes on the screen. You may be sharing sensitive information with the site or app. This means this message from Google, is it okay? You're not gonna be sharing any sensitive information. So whatever is being captured, they want to store it in, in their directory as well. That's it, say okay and go on. Say okay and move on. Yeah, thank you, sir. Okay, cool. So this is how to it hub. You can click the free download uh, and version that is only for 100 searches, absolutely free. And anything beyond that, you'll have to convert the software into a paid account. But what does the software do? Well, only when you start uh, installing this application and put to use, you will know the power of it. But I have this guy since the last four years. Uh, I'm a great fan of this particular product. If you if you think uh, Nityanand and team is buying softwares, uh, then I think Outwit Hub would be one of those. Yeah, regularly every year we go ahead and pay a premium uh, to make sure that we get the updates, make sure that this particular product is working on our computers. And I don't think a day where we have not used the product. Every day. Because we're lead sourcing guys, right? We will have to use many tools to get the job done. And here's such tool. Oh, okay, so there you go. So the cat is out of the bag. I'm gonna empty this and this is exactly how it looks like. And you can see the tool here. What you want to do at the initial stages before you get a hang of what it does, I want you to treat it like any other browser. Any other browser, uh, like for example, a Chrome browser, a Firefox browser. When you trigger that, it will have a navigation bar and that's the navigation bar. Go to the navigation bar. When you know this is not the site you want to visit, you normally delete that and then type the site that you want to visit. So type in google.com. Treat it like a browser. Browser shows up google.com and now it says, what would you like to search, sir? So go ahead, type your string in and say that you're looking for some HR profiles. This time HR directors. Uh, you want to look at HR directors, but on a profile, it will be director. So you might want to pull out that S there and make sure that it is just one director that you're hunting. Uh, this time in Mumbai, and I would like the Gmail account, please. Gmail.com. Search. Okay, now since it's by default trained to show me 100 pages, I think uh, it's already displaying 100 pages. What do I do with that? Well, I think you should just move your mouse instead of going to email reaper, scraper, and all that. You just move your mouse towards your left-hand side and tilt your head towards your left. 
And then you notice that particular button which says contacts, click the button contacts. Give it a, give it some time because it's processing is that as you could see. There you go. It quickly pulls up and rips out all the data there, which is actually uh, on a display, email addresses and phone number if possible. Phone number is there. It picks up the phone number in places where the phone numbers are displayed. And then it says, what would you like to do, sir? Well, I would like to definitely catch it. So click the button catch after selecting all. And then now you have the data on your hard drive. Okay, that's it. As simple as it can be. Yeah, don't no sweating, no scraping, no copying, no Excel sheet, blah, 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 blah. And it just does the job. Now, what about the second page? Oh, very simple, isn't it? Just scroll down and click the button second page if that's what you want to do. That's one manual effort that you might want to do. And you can see that the data disappeared. And then it quickly brings up the next set of data. Now, sometimes you'll be so excited, you'll be so excited that you will forget that you're not catching the information. That's why you have something called as auto catch. Click the button auto catch, and now it starts to auto catch. 111 uh, emails so far. 111 emails so far. There's one more page pending because it's only three pages. Click the button next. And now it automatically refreshes to a new set of data and waiting for the numbers to come. 163, job done. How much does it cost? Uh, it's $89, $89. Aaj ka to price dollars ka to aap dekh rahe ho. Yeah, I can't tell you 69 uh, and then tomorrow it will be 72. So $89 multiplied by the, by the current exchange rate. And I'm sure that's, that's the cost that you'll have to uh, pay. And how long is it? Lifelong. $89, they're not going to come back again asking you any sort of money, no subscription. But this is for now. This is for now. They're already looking at a recurring uh, you know, uh, money. Like in every month you pay uh, for the software. They're working on that particular plan. But before they do that, I think you should go ahead if you're really working on or if you have plans to work on databases, I think this will be one software that you want to invest your money in. And sometimes you might just want to do it for SEO sake, right? Because SEO guys also train you on picking up keywords, URLs, and the top link and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so for that blah, blah work out, so you can go ahead and say click the links, and now it will quickly pick up all the links that is around in that particular page. There you go. Now, if you are looking at just the in.linkedin.com, you just have to specify saying I'm looking at in linkedin.com please and i will highlight all those in dot linkedin.com and says these are the only ones i can see would you like to extract them and the answer is yeah clear this dump and then click pick up the ones that you want to catch there you go all the linkedin dot uh, link now each of those are relevant profiles that you're going after so in case if a customer is actually ready to pay you for the linkedin profile well i think you have a list there you can set it up now, how do I export this? You see the export button, click the export button and choose the format you want this file in. CSV, Excel file, XML file, JavaScript file, or the JSON file. You go ahead, go whatever files you want to, pick them up and uh, store them at the place that you want to. Job done. Here's another big thing that it can do. Uh, jump back or just click the search button again. It will search for the same info again. Okay, now it comes in and now it says, what would you like to do now? Okay, so I'm going to go back to my previous link. Remember, without the site LinkedIn.com, we just typed in marketing and then we picked up a handful of emails. So let's go there. In.ibm.com is what we hunted in the, uh, in the outset. So I'm going to go do that. Uh, In.ibm.com, please search. And then it quickly brings up. I'm going to clear this dump. There's no value for that data because data is always there. You can always go shopping uh, yeah, and then quickly pick up the ones that you want. I don't need this links anymore, but I'm looking for emails. So I go to the emails and see how much we got. Search. Okay, it quickly brings in. It's going to a high BM contact. I don't know if you can see the URL. Um, Play close attention here. You can see that it's going to IBM.com and it goes on to many other IBM.com pages and it's picking up the data from there. How much do we have? We have around 35 on the first page of Google. 
But this 35 also has a lot of gold mine if we jump inside each of those URLs, isn't it? So what you tell the tool is that you select one of those particular fields and say, buddy, I like you jumping inside here. Could you please jump deeper onto that particular profile? Select, right click, and it says, find in this particular source, I want more contacts. You see another one which says, fast search contacts from this particular pages or the links that you see in this particular page. I select the second one and leave it for some time. See what's it's, what it's currently doing. It's scraping that particular LinkedIn profile inside and then jumps into one of those contact details of each of those links and picks up all the data there. If it spots an email, it quickly brings up that email and says, this is an email that I found. So you don't really have to dig in deeper, clicking on the links and, and, and do all the sweating. Well, the software does it. It's already crawling and you can see it says you've been recording the video and I have very b less bandwidth to actually operate. Stay with me for some time. So, so it will go ahead, look at all the links in there and it will jump into each of those links and dig for more information. Ladies and gentlemen, that's for you uh, for now. When you come back on Thursday, I have a few more tools to demonstrate. You come back and uh, we'll take a look at those in detail. Thank you very much for coming in. If you have any questions, stay back. If not, you're free to go. We'll see you soon with the part two where we go one-to-one -one extraction as well. It's a pretty much same process, but we will do a little more, uh, what do you call, um, ways to see things, different perspectives on how you can apply the same logic through different tools as well. We'll see you soon. Thank you. What is the pro in doing this uh, deep dive within? More links, more, more emails. As you could see, it made a lot of noises, and as you and and as you can see, one thousand two hundred and thirty-eight email addresses fetched in. One thousand two hundred and thirty-eight emails fetched in, and more. Uh, it hasn't done the process yet. Uh, B A B shuru hai. Big date making, big database making in the making. <laughs> Absolutely, rightly said, Pooja on Google. People like you are rare to find. Uh, okay, what happened, sir? You suddenly put me in the cage. Uh, how are you able to get that screen like that? This screen, sir, very simple. Right click, and then I said, Go ahead, pick up everything, everything around, and that's all it did. Uh, it goes ahead and brings up all of them. Yeah, what is the pro uh, in doing? What is the what is the pro in doing this deep dive? Is to get more uh, specific emails, ma'am. Great information session, informative. Thank you, Robin. We'll see you back again. There is more to come. There's more to come. This is what I found in uh, in Google review. <laughs> okay, so yes, sir. Yeah, they put me on a cage and they said uh, 10 rupee, $10 for viewing this guy. Uh, yeah, but you get it for free, sir. You can talk to me. I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, you may also reach me on leadsourcing at gmail.com. Uh, lead sourcing at gmail.com that's my email id and i will also send you my phone number this is on my whatsapp this is my personal number so you'll see my kids are on there but that's my uh, whatsapp number as well based on your experience which is a good tool amongst all of them uh, there is no ma'am if you ask me saying pick up a tool from a cutting player or an hammer or maybe a screwdriver i would say all of it is required because that's in my toolkit uh, I would have to see what is the problem, what is the customer's requirement. Based on that, I pick up the, and choose the tool that will help me do the magic. But if in terms of investment, every tool is brought in when I have a client. I do not buy any tool unless I have a client. You, you heard me right. Trust me, this is honestly 100% truthful lessons I'm telling you right now. I do not buy a tool just to explore, just to have fun just to gain experience. No, 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 no. <laughs> if I see a paying customer, I go negotiate everything around the tool. I will tell them saying that we will be able to do this, blah, 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 and then go ahead and invest the money before I build the customer in the next 30 days. Okay, that's how the, these tools landed up here. There are many, many other tools on the computer. Everything had a typical customer in the back end. If not, if it is not plugged in, powered by somebody, uh, 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 we have no money. 
Okay, so I'm I'm sure you should also do the same. So as long as you don't have a paying customer, don't think about investing. Go ahead, read YouTube videos, go find manuals, read, learn more about the product, see what it can do. You've seen the demonstration here too, and it's still doing, it's still working in the back end. Uh, you can learn all of that, but wait till the customer comes in and says, I have this requirement, can you guys process this? And you confidently say, sure, yes, we can get that done. No problem at all. If you're good at something, uh, something, never do it for free. Oh yeah, that, that, that's it, that's it, that's it. You, you, you said it, you said it. Always build the customer, always build the customer. Be resourceful, <laughs> yeah. See who's quoting it. Does it sound anywhere like a 16 year old? I'm coming back to that same pool again, but uh, some surprise. Gentlemen, uh, your signature may be for Jaden. We'll collect that when you're dropping into Bangalore. Let us know. <laughs> Can there be a class on lead sourcing? I think you're present in the class right now. This is this class is called lead sourcing. Ma'am, what happened? Everything okay? Or oh, scoring? Lead sourcing, no man, read it properly. This is called scoring. Uh, that's a good point, ma'am. Uh, but again, you tell me what you want to score. I can I can quickly tell you what uh, what kind of scoring systems are available. I had, in fact, a document which spoke about all the scoring systems that uh, the planet Earth had. Uh, stay with me. I know the scoring method is to uh, pick up. Uh, is that the lead scoring? I think so. Oh, wow. Kya baat hai? Stay with me, ma'am. I think your prayer is answered. Uh, lead scoring guide, everything you need to know about lead, or lead scoring. Ah, there you go. 50 plus lead scoring mechanisms that the customers use today. And all right here. And I think it's a, a file from Makiro. And uh, you're free to actually use them. Band system is what most of them follow. You can also follow a task mechanism. Uh, yeah, band is B-A-N-T, uh, band. Let me quickly save this guy and uh, push it back to you as a copy. Stay with me, two minutes. Can you share this link? One minute, uh, no, precisely five minutes. I'll get there. Mm, yeah, stay with me, I'm gonna get this for you. Which means it becomes, life becomes easy when you know the terms on how companies are using it today. Because it's not rocket science. Information is all over the place. So you can quickly mug that up one or two. And then you'll sound like a professional on uh, lead scoring. You will conduct a training and we'll all be there. Uh, yeah, so that's something that you can do. Roti mat to nityanand roti banana se kao. Mere guru ji ne bataya. To kya karenge? We are by default. <laughs> we, are, we are troubled individuals here. See? Uh, lead scoring. There you go. PDF and PDF, is it? Huh. Nice. So this is PDF. I move this guy to Dropbox and then I give you the link. Okay, Dropbox. I'm enjoying this session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Hishneet. Thank you. Uh, don't feed a man a fish. Teach the man fishing. Absolutely, ma'am. Uh, but we had some modifications done 2018. Roti mat to roti banana sikha. Abhi Hindi mein bhi hum seek rahe hain. Hindi, North India ke liye aare hain. Lot, lot of audience there. <laughs> so, Hindi, Hindi dialogues now. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go push this into a blog. And, okay. So, yeah. So, you have all the bakery geekery stuff and all. Uh, what we need is this document and the link. Let me show you this. I wish I knew Hindi. <laughs> Any translation is also coming, so don't don't worry. We have subtitles there. So I'm gonna go pick this link up and share it with you. Okay, I hope this is the link. There you go. Okay, ma'am, let me know, confirm if you can see that particular file. If not, I will try and modify this here. Share it. Uh, create a unique link. Okay, copy the link. Push it back. Okay, um, this will allow you to download and the other one will just give you to preview it. View it on Dropbox. But I suggest that you pick up the second link 
and keep a copy on your hard drive push it on your phone see it 10 times and then you will be the master and let me know when you're conducting the class i would love to be part of that class too download it fantastic yeah you let me know when you're conducting the webinar free by the way free webinars and let let send us the invite uh, yeah that if you're not learning it for training then i think you're not learning so you'll have to learn something uh, look at the pdf and see how you'll conduct the training program making it easy for uh, 16 year olds <laughs> and uh, and sell that pdf to us and we will all be there uh, to ash it out <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, goodbye for now. We'll see you soon uh, on Thursday, I think. Uh, no Thursday. I think we will see you on Friday for lead sourcing. Uh, the regular group will come in on Thursday. Back again for email marketing. Goodbye for now. Good night, sir. Bye-bye for now. Sorry, couldn't find. Uh, oh, you couldn't find the link? Uh, one second, I, I passed the link again. Um, all right, there we go. Try now. Just one click and it'll automatically download it. So you'll have to search in your downloaded file. Yeah, a folder. Yes, automatically downloading. Yeah. This is non-automatic uh, download link. The previous one was the download button. It, just that the zero and the one is changing. That's all. If you notice carefully, the last digit is zero. I convert that to one, then it becomes a downloaded one. Okay, cool. Goodbye for now.